What's up, guys? We are today with Drog, Cruz, and Noob, and we're talking about the sieges, what's happening in the first heats, and what feelings do people have? What are you seeing in your clan, in your community, maybe on Reddit or whatever you follow? And like, talk about everything that happened with the clan. But first, just basic uh, quick question. And Cruz and uh, Drog are actually in the same clan these days. So it's a little bit uh, same question to both of you. But how did the first teeth go? And did, you, did your clan do any weird tactics or anything that you want to share or talk about? Let's start with Drog. Go first, Drog. Yeah, let's me start. first. Me first. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah, we did. We did lots of weird stuff. It got crazy in there. I mean, just incredible strategy for the siege. The matchmaking was so on point. Uh, no, we we literally we got matched with a clan that was so far below our level. It, there was no strategy to even remotely talk about. It was a bloodbath to the clan that we slaughtered. I'm sorry. Um, it was like, it was basically just a farce, uh, would be how I'd look at it. So it was, and I still had fun, but it definitely wasn't what I thought it was going to be at all. D did you heavily plan on it? And then it ended up being like super easy battle. Yeah. Well, a ton of planning went in from, from the top people in the clan for sure. Like I got to tip my cap to them. They did a really good job of organizing things, especially because there's no real way to do this in game. You know what I mean? There's not really a good way to organize stuff with clan talk or stuff like that. So it's all done through Discord. But yeah, the people that lead the clan knew what they were doing. And I'm sure as matchmaking improves, that will come more into play. But for the first siege, I mean, it, literally, I, Cruz, and how many buildings did we lose? <laughs> one. We lost one post. <laughs> yeah. one. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, what as about... Part the, as part of the leadership of the of the mm. side in the clan, we prepared very well. We assigned every player what to do, how to do, and things like that. But as matchmaking was a fiasco, let me say like that. Yeah, I kind uh, of expected that you, you guys would put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. We did everything that we, we possibly could do as organization, but... Uh, it, it didn't matter. When it started, everybody went crazy. Let me destroy everything I can. And it was like that. Oh, okay, okay. We, we actually had kind of similar issue. I was telling, we we also had like, you know, Excel, Excel sheet and we planned everybody's teams and I looked their champions and so on. But also the plan was that the weaker people, like the people with strong teams, they were not supposed to attack on the first day and save it on the second day to make sure that, you know, we balance the teams out and everybody gets an attack. But we even had some complications with that. And I, I did my first attack maybe like 10 hours into the seats, but then I did all of my three attacks on the first day and even I screwed it up. So <laughs> it was a little bit fiasco, but I was kind of expecting it. Uh, what about you, Noob? How did it go with you guys? Yeah, I mean, it went really well for us. We lost more than one post. I think we lost like three posts and a tower, or four posts and a tower. So we did lose a building. We've got that repair cost staring us in the face. I'm sure many people uh, sympathize with that. Um, but now, like we were up against an easier clan as well, uh, some Frenchmen. Uh, so we, we beat the French, which was nice. Um, and uh, they've got the Olympics. They'll get over it. It's you, fine. You, you, know <laughs> that, you, you know that IPR is like basically originally a French clan, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I'm sure they can. Well, you can take revenge for the French if you fight against the French. You prob probably you'll win that one. We're still mostly French in, in the clan. They have a massive number. Nice. nice. Uh, well, we weren't against IPR, I'll tell you that. So it was, a, it was an easier one. Um, but yeah, but no, it, it was fun. But it was very organized. And I, I did think it was funny as well. They were so organized, but then like they were jumped on really early, whatever, Tuesday morning when it went live. And they were kind of going like, hey, everybody, we need someone weak to attack this. But half of the people were still in work or half of them were asleep. They hadn't woken up yet. So a bunch of guys just ended up getting impatient and attacking stuff anyway. Um, I remember going out for the afternoon and looking at it in the afternoon going like, God, you've almost destroyed this entire fortress. Like, I need to win a fight so I can actually get my rewards at the end. Like, please don't destroy everything. And I want to do a video. So they managed to hold off at the end and scraped in some wins for the, the rest of us at the end of it. Yeah, that, that's actually one issue that we had, and we were panicking yeah. about it a little bit, and I hope Plarium does something about it. But 
if you don't get one win in offense or defense, you're not gonna get the rewards. And that can actually be issue if your clan like kills the enemy and somebody logs in like 20 hours into the siege or something like that. Easily, yeah. I mean, this even potentially could affect a high-end clan, but I imagine your average Joe <laughs> where, you know, you're not going to have this crazy Discord communication and strategizing and everything. Like, you're just, oh, log on, cool, do some fights, yeah, great. And then, yeah, some guy comes home from work, he's on his commute, and he's like, yeah, great, can't wait to play Raid, check out Siege. Oh, everything's destroyed. Well, <laughs> I guess there's nothing for me to do. Yeah. No, no rewards. Womp womp. So, like, by the way, my clan battle was then a little bit different than you guys because we did have an actual enemy. We were actually against final Ken Pachi's clan. We basically were expecting to meet, like, level 50 opponents, like, seems like you guys were getting. But we actually got a lot harder clan than we were expecting. But we were planning heavily, like Cruise and said, we had looked everybody's champions and we had built teams for them. And we assigned people to different uh, places. So I think... We will do it very differently next time. We learned a lot about it, but you know, we we actually had quite quite a hard battle. To be fair, though, we won it like easily, but it was still a pretty hard one. And one surprise thing that we had, and I guess you guys probably didn't get that far to see these kind of mechanics, but we had like two MVPs in our clan, and the other one it wasn't like uh, we put all the best teams in stronghold and in like the Defense towers, defense towers and magic towers and so on. But actually, there was a couple random posts where people put some weird condition and then they got like 10 plus wins in defense and they be mm -hmm. basically, you know, soloed the enemy clan and got at them. We had one guy in our clan called Hunter and he had room with attack only uh, condition. And he had, I think, um, let me think about this. He had team with Alika, which is the epic champion with lockout. I think it was Alika, Mountain King, Protoss, and it was super weird team. Doesn't doesn't look good on paper, but he got like 12 wins in defense or something like that. And <laughs> it turned out to be very weird. I think that's what we're gonna think more about in the future. That you definitely don't want to just put all of the best teams on paper into the stronghold. And you want to think about the conditions and maybe somebody has really good team that they can make with support only champions or something like that. I think that's going to be the real end game and the strategies that people are going to do in the future. What, what do you guys think about that? And did you have, even though you had easy opponents, but did you do any kind of strategies like this? Okay, let's on start IPR. with... On IPR, we did. We tried to, to, we tried to distribute some random teams in some posts that we might have good conditions and things like that. The, but against the opponent we had, we didn't have the chance to test it because they mm. didn't go through the first post. So everybody was holding the first post, had all the attacks, and nobody had the chance to test their defense. It was like that. Yeah. Can but we what, ask you, what, what was the post that, that failed? The one post? Uh, it was the post three. It was the post three. Right. <laughs> yeah, they had good ships. <laughs> they came um, by, by the water. <laughs> <laughs> Even the best defense can fall eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we had one guy who had, like, I think 10 wins on defense. I'm pretty sure holy. Like, nobody could get past him from the opposing clan. Just, dude, just absolutely soloed everybody. Uh, I just wish, I wish we could see the battles. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, cool. I, yeah, I'm sure yeah. anyone who's played any other kind of gotcha game, you know, normally you can go back in, you can watch your, you know, your battle, your opponent's battles, they beat you. Like, I, that's, that's what I'm, I'm missing. I just want to see the battles. Yeah, I, I hope we get battles and also like, you know, leaderboards and rankings and this kind of stuff. I actually asked it in the content creator chat. I think... I don't remember which CM, but one of them said that we will get leaderboards in sieges. I don't think we can see them yet, unless you guys can see it. But by the way, yeah, I've I've clan rankings, but within yeah. your clan, like who has the most death victories? But yeah, yeah, yeah. They they did say we're getting it, but I don't. She didn't specify that are we going to get it instantly, or they said that there's going to be updates to it. Is it going to come later? I'm not. Well, Quite sure. One thing we know, Plarium is rapid with improvements <laughs> to the game. So this, <laughs> it this will, is the, will be here soon. 
It drives me crazy though. And like, this is actually something I think worth talking about where I really hate this philosophy because the thing with, with like these modes is it's really tough to get people interested in this stuff down the road. Like when it launches and if people have a bad experience, they're like, all right, whatever. It was terrible. I'm not interested anymore. And then, you, you know, mm. I really wish they would just wait to introduce these features until they were actually fully baked. Because in my opinion, and I don't know how you guys feel, like this is a really cool idea, something I personally wanted in the game for a while. But it just, to me, it feels half-baked. It's like we're, we didn't give it the time it needed to get to where it needed to be. Like rankings. How do you not have rankings for this mode from the moment it comes out? That's the entire reason that people want to play this stuff is to see where they level up or where they match with other clans. To me, you would have been better off waiting an extra two months to get that feature in there as opposed to launching it right now where it's just, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a curmudgeon. That's just oh, how I, I had think. The same feeling. I had the same feeling. How can you have a competitive mode? That you can have a tie between two clans and nobody get nothing. Yeah. How how a competitive mode, a PvP mode, has a tie that nobody wins nothing. You destroyed everything. You did your job, but you get nothing. How that? Which you which need... is also strange because other games have a way of dealing with this, and typically what mm -hmm. they'll do is whatever team use the lowest amount of resources to get those things that's the team that wins like it's really a simple thing and again here we see a mode that has a lot of potential especially for people that enjoy pvp and it's like why is this not fully thought out why is this not tested correctly before it came in and i think that also leads into conversations about florins and all the other stuff for a bunch of clans like does nobody test this stuff yeah, we're, we're, just... we're going to talk about that in a second. By the way, the thing you said about it being half-baked, I feel like it's even the same for Live Arena, even though it's a game oh. mode that like, we play a lot. And, but in Live Arena, they could easily do a little bit tweaks and make it much more interesting. Like If there was tournaments, events, like seasons, all kinds of stuff that they could do to spice it up, like the basic mechanics are there, but it feels like it's a game mode that misses all of the like content was me meant to be added to it and i feel like it's agree. maybe the same with sieges too that uh the idea of it is super good but uh like we need to have strong rewards or seasons or some kind of incentives to like keep people into it i feel like some other games i'm not super familiar with all of the other ones but i i know the ones that ash played and so on they have all kinds of seasonal stuff like all the time yeah. Like in, I, in I regards to like, PvP specifically. Yeah. Th that's my biggest desire. Is, and I, I don't know about you guys, but you can see the potential, right? You know, we've all talked about how we enjoy Raid, we play Raid, and we like Raid, and the potential is there. Like, there's so much potential in these PvP modes to make them more accessible for more players, to make them more exciting, more fun, to give them more variety. And it's just like, it never seems to happen. You know what I mean? It's, you know, Live Arena has been around for over a year now. There have been essentially no changes to it. Where it's like, how, how, I don't know how many people work at Player Him. I know they're talented designers. Why are people not working on the stuff? So, uh, by the way, I haven't even asked them about it. Maybe you guys know something that I don't. Have they said that they will ever add any m more updates to Live Arena? Uh, from what I've heard, I think it's like, yeah, they'll do it eventually, but it seems like it's pretty far away, was the vibe I got. Oh, okay. Um, because yeah, yeah, which I think is a bit disappointing, like especially when you've got like the battle rules and it's like, okay, there yeah. could be fun stuff where yeah, like, seasons would be a big deal and like some sort of reset and trophies, rewards, cool stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot like a lot of untapped potential for sure. Yeah, they, are, have, they are red have mechanics added to size, like the conditions. Mm, if yeah, we had the simple two conditions in Live Arena, like mm -hmm. epic onlys and rare onlys that could make the battle a lot more fun. And can, it could be a normal mode that it's everything, and a one that can be you can choose, you can vote, it's random or things like that. Yeah, just like we have, a, like every week we have many tournaments and events, why don't we have tournaments and events for Live Arena? Like they need to do Live Arena seasons, one season can be two weeks, one month, whatever, and then there's some kind of, you know, varying rule set and rewards and stuff that gets people excited. I think that would be super good content. I think it would be good, you know, promotional material for the game. And it could be like a game mode that people are super into. 
And like you said, I, it, it feels like half-baked uh, game mode. Yeah, I know why. It's because it's not making the money. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think but, so? But the thing is, like, that's a short-term view, in my opinion, because the more people you have excited about the game, the more willing they are to spend. So this is what drives me crazy about their thought process is all of this stuff is not hard to implement, in my opinion. Like, from a, from a technical standpoint, really not hard to do with talented designers and, and people like Clarium has. It's just whoever is pulling the strings doesn't see the value in terms of return. And that's, I think, what drives me crazy. You know, like these modes are, are super cool, super interesting ideas. And Siege, again, a mode that I think a lot of people wanted for a very long time. And it's like, ah, just nail the landing for once. Nail the landing. You guys know how to make good stuff. So why can't you just nail it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think I one advantage Siege has over Live Arena is that I know from my viewers, like a lot of, especially your more casual players, earlier game players, just don't even touch Live Arena. They won't go near it because they just go in and they get smashed and like, well, this sucks. And you don't have to do it. Uh, at least Siege has the advantage where it's, it's going to happen every two weeks, no matter what. So there's more incentive for them to add more stuff to the mode, I think, because at least everyone will probably do it, like at least to some degree. Like if you keep getting smashed, eventually you'll start to win. Uh, whereas I think people... Uh, probably it's a reason they don't develop Live Arena as much either, is that probably a big chunk of the player base just doesn't touch it because they're casual and, it, you know, it's not much fun to lose <laughs> uh, unless you're a competitive <laughs> person and you're like, oh, it's a chance to improve and I want to get better. Like some people just be like, no, that, that, I'm sad now. I'm not playing <laughs> that. That, <laughs> that really <laughs> speaks to like the importance of good matchmaking, right? Which I think has been mm -hmm. one of my biggest complaints for Live Arena personally. And and again, we saw it with Siege with this first yeah. one where the matchmaking was just like, <laughs> yeah, like how, how? Like I get that it's based on CDC. <laughs> it's the first Siege. It's supposed to improve. Awesome. That's all good and well. But how is it that bad the first go around? Like that's that's the crazy thing. And, and again, like you saw in the community, where people are like, dude, like, what's the point? We're getting blown out by IPR. We lost, they lost, we couldn't even <laughs> defeat more than one post. This mode sucks. And so then that's like, that's the story that's written. And that's why I wish they would take more time to make this stuff appropriately play tested before they release it. And the thing is, again, they have really talented people. Why don't they do it? Why do they not make that a priority? Because I want to see these things succeed and certainly us as content creators, the more this stuff succeeds, the, the better the game does, the better it, uh, it is for us. But also just for general people playing it. We're like, we want this to be fun. It's it's a video game, right? So who knows? Yeah, I don't know. To be fair, even though like, of course, like probably like, you know, most of the players are not super hardcore, but even the casual players in Raid are pretty hardcore players compared to the other games. I mean, it takes a lot of time and effort to like do your like daily stuff in Raid. And I don't think they should, you know, design game modes that Live Arena is only for top top 100 or top 1,000 whales in the game that can have fun because they have all of the champions. They should try to make it so that, you know, most players can be into it. And I know it's yeah. kind of a cringe thing to say, but I think it literally a big part of it, not the only reason, but big part of it is the rewards. I mean, people will do like Sand Devil uh, speed tournament if it has good rewards. People will put their minds into it if it's really important. Like, let's say Hard Fire Night is super hard, way too hard. I think it's they didn't really design it so that many players can do it. But because Fire Night is generally the most farmed dungeon, everybody still cares about it and tries to do it, even casual players. And it's kind of <laughs> too hard content for many people. And they still go out of their way to do it. If Live Arena and Sieges and so on, if they had rewards and other interesting stuff, more people would still be into them, even just the, like outside of the super hardcore PvP players. Or what do you guys think about that? Uh, I, thank God they improved the rewards for Siege, because oh mm. my God, those were, <laughs> when we first saw the rewards, I think everyone was like, "Dude, what is like? Come on, guys! Like yeah. this is absurd." So kudos, got to give props to them. You know when it's when it's deserved so kudos to plarium thank you for listening to the community the community and actually improving that stuff before we had a siege so got to give them props there i will say the one thing that i don't understand and this is something i saw talked about in our clan cruising is obviously there are a lot of avatars that come with this mode why can i only get one avatar because i'm in the highest tier i'll never be able to get any of the other avatars 
surprisingly that matters to a lot of people that is something plarium needs to change you should be eligible to get every avatar if you are in the top tier they should all drop not just the only one so just a thought but better than it was yeah. by the way it's very easy to, to fix yeah Th that was super confusing to me when we got the avatars and then I was seeing other people with other avatars and everybody in my clan got the same avatar that I got. I didn't know you can get the other ones and I was super confused that is there some competition or what are these av avatars that are popping yeah, up? We, we all got Lamasu, right? The, the yeah. Boy yeah. Chick, yeah, yeah, yeah. People that are in Tire 6 got Lamasu, so er, mm -hmm. they are distributed by Tire. And uh, why yeah. not? The highest Tire could have the Tires below in the chest randomly. That would fix everything. No, but uh, being uh, not able to get an avatar, being in the highest tire, you need to drop. You need to lose six times in a row to go to tire one. So <laughs> you can have an avatar. So, uh, so to go back to tire six, you're going you're gonna to have to wait uh, six months. Yeah, there's going to be some clan that does that, goes all the way back to tier one, like now, finally, and then ready to be like, yeah, okay, guys, we fixed it now. Okay, <laughs> to to, to yeah, be yeah, fair, yeah. like, like I said, it. We, oh. hope, we hope the clan, so we literally did it because we did it for the Hydra rewards. We just moved into new clan a couple of days ago, so I don't know if you're going to start from tier one. We actually don't really want to drop down into tiers in sieges. We just want to do it for a Hydra, to be honest. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think any like really competitive PvP plan would ever do it. Like I know for a fact there's no way IPR or Panda or Mad is gonna do that because the rewards, having those rewards are so important for arena, especially because this set doesn't really fix polymorph, but that's a different video. Uh but you know, helps a little bit. So yeah, I don't think we'd ever do that. What do you think, Cruzan? No way. We're very competitive. Even losing anything, it's not our goal. If if we can win, we will try to win. And we will try to adapt to the mode. But not being able to reach a resource that is already there, being the top tire, and their resources being only available to the lower tire, it uh, pisses me off. You know, there is a, a issue that you know there's going to be an issue. Even before you launch the mode, you know it's going to be an issue, so it's very easy to fix it. Why not to uh, put some effort in it? Uh, they, they, they are red said they recognize the tire between the, the people that destroyed everything and got nothing happens. They will take the time to see if that's a problem or not. <laughs> How can you not see that the red is a problem? How? <laughs> I, I don't know what to... Uh, it's that way of dealing with the issue that's a red an issue yeah that that like i feel for every player in that situation because if you're in a clan where you had a lot of buildings get destroyed and you don't have the resources to rebuild or upgrade anything you're already out on this mode like you're already you're like i don't like this i don't like this yeah. because i'm getting punished for playing the game. And again, this is like the kind of stuff that drives me really crazy with the thought process of instead of just fixing this, we know it's a problem. You know, we're, we're going to quote unquote, look at it. Why do we need to look at it for five months? We don't need to look at it for five months. The community knows it's an issue. You know, it's an issue. Just fix it. Just fix it now. And then people are happy and then they spend more money and you make more money and everyone wins. You know what I mean? Except for the people whose pocketbooks are obviously very light. Uh, you know, I, I can certainly uh, relate to that, but you know, Plarium wins if they fix it, but they don't want to do it. It's like they're like, "Now nah, we're gonna we're gonna evaluate. We're gonna sit back here and evaluate, guys." What? Wait, wait did yeah? Did, did they say that they're like taking their time on it? Because I was expecting yeah. that they would they would fix this very fast, but no. Oh, they, okay. they literally said they're going to quote unquote evaluate things. Yeah, uh, as we, we go know, forward, we know it's a problem, but in the future. Yeah, I think it was the Raid Digest <laughs> they said that. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, I missed <laughs> that one. I, I did see yeah. people on Reddit being pretty angry about that. So yeah. it, it wasn't really issue to our clan, but, but I saw it in the other places. Oh, mm -hmm. something happened with your uh, camera. Yeah, talk. my camera disappeared. We'll see. I think my camera is doing <laughs> its, its normal stuff where it messes up. Sorry, but we can still talk about this. Give me yeah. a minute and I'll be back. 
Yeah, yeah. No, no, or no you can problem. be like Mario. You're going to fix it in six months or one year. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, nice. maybe, it's not, maybe it's not an issue. Maybe it's not an issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all we, good. We don't we, need the camera. You know, you can hear my disembodied voice. We're good. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll take our time and do the video and we'll evaluate it later if we need it or not. I'm back. Oh, you're I'm back, okay. baby. See, nice. leave, leave that in, though. Leave that in, Shinny. I want them to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but by the way, I would I would say that the point that you guys uh, from IPR were saying about the clan hop thing. So we are obviously very into arena as well. And the ironic part is that you know the stone skin rewards from Hydra are kind of much more important. For I mean, both rewards are good, but stone skin accessories are much bigger deal for PvP than seeds rewards. So we will rather like you know skip like drop down in tiers in seats even though we want to you know compete in it and get to high rank and so on but we rather do that so that we can get like multiple months of stone skin rewards in row and stay competitive in pvp and try to get better it's kind of a weird mechanic and you know i've heard some people that are kind of mad that our clan is doing it i know some other clans are doing it as well but you know <laughs> we were kind of um, experimenting on it and that's why we hopped the clan early on now so that we can climb back in the seats but you know i don't know what, what I, you guys think about that strategy when i read the rules that they put in game to siege and i saw that you can claim the real the rewards even not being in the clan that you were before or when you leave there are some rewards that automatically goes to you and not, there are some that goes to the clan i figure out that it's gonna be clan hopping and clan mm -hmm. changing all the time because the mechanics is good to do that if you don't want to do it in the most competitive way so i think that's gonna be normal if mm. you can do it without losing hydra or without losing cvc or putting at least two of it together you're gonna choose we're gonna prioritize the and cvc we're gonna prioritize the uh, and hydra people will be hopping clams and yeah. changing clams to do that yeah i don't that's probably not not the best thing for the game, but you know we're gonna do it. We want to get the stone skin. That's that's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. double Yumeko and Tranda is still a big issue. And even though we have, you know, in my clan, there's like there's one guy that can do like seventy billion, and then there's many people that can do like two billion. So there's a big variety. And what you know, what keeps us together is not the love for Hydra, but for PvP. So we have very different levels of you know. Hydra, Hydra progress in the clan. Yeah, yeah. well, it's a, it's a major issue. And again, another thing that they've said they're going to fix that has not been fixed since they announced it. I think they announced they were going to work on Hydra, what, two months ago? Here we are. Nothing's fixed. Nothing's changed. And it's just like, oh, man, this game has so much potential to be 10 million times better. And it seems like they just don't want to do it for some weird reason. I don't know. I, it, it drives me literally crazy. By the way, yeah, speaking... Oh, yeah, sorry. Go, go. Oh, I was just going to say, the clan hopping. Yeah, I mean, it can be frustrating for people when other clans are doing it and, like, you get wrecked by a way stronger clan that shouldn't be there. I, it sucks, but, like, people are going to... The reality is people are going to do it so long as it's it's a viable, good strategy, which it seems like it is. Uh, like, it's going to happen. Um, and, like, it's really on the developers to design the game in such a way that doesn't happen like maybe siege will clamp down on that a bit where you know you're going to be building up your fortress over time and i don't know if they add more stuff in or if there's leaderboards uh, so you're more incentivized to stay in a clan but yeah the like clan hopping is is something that's you know viable and and maybe even optimal to do if you don't care <laughs> you know about having the prestige of staying in the one clan but for resources yeah that's like a game design problem um so I don't know. There's not too much point in getting mad at players for doing it. Cause, you know, players, players can be sweaty tryhards. They're gonna do it. You know, you can't really stop them. It's, it's that's really a game design problem. Yeah, for sure. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And to be fair, maybe not IPR, but I think most other clans have kind of been doing the similar thing in normal CVC since forever. Not hopping clans, but doing low points on purpose to get good opponent next time or making deals oh, yeah. with other clans. And I don't think that's kind of widely accepted. I don't think people generally have issue with that, but it, it's basically the same thing. And when it was new, people did complain about it. So I think people yeah. will probably forget the drama in regards to this. 
But what about the actual rewards that we get on the seats? What, what do you guys think about the item set and avatar and uh, the champion? I guess that's all of the rewards that we're getting. The, the set's pretty good. It it even with low amount of pieces, it has a really good potential. Not only in PvP, but uh, in many hours of the game, getting speed, getting uh, uh, accuracy, and things like that is really good for low amount of pieces, three pieces, two pieces. You're gonna have good status, so it's a very interesting set. But it's gonna be hard to get it. At least you're gonna get it only between 15 days. So it's gonna be very hard to to have some pairs of it, and the champion is very good for some areas of the game, especially especially Hydra, if you have Trenda comps. <laughs> but uh, that's not everybody's situation. As we know it's a little amount of players that have it. So she's gonna be interesting in other areas of the game, but I think not as impactful. And she's gonna be for trended teams right now. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my biggest issue is, uh, you know, cool, cool that they're adding this set again. They're trying to quote unquote address polymorph, but it's just, it doesn't go far enough. Just straight up, it doesn't go far enough. It's still a problem. The actual power of this ridiculously overpowered blessing is still there. Like, yes, you have a ten percent less chance. To proc it, if you've got what is it, four pieces or six pieces? I think it's quite a few pieces on. It still doesn't fix the problem. Like, just fix the problem, man. Like this, this it's so infuriating. Make the changes to the actual blessing. Stop trying to introduce stuff to make it better. And I think one of the biggest things that concerns me from a PvP perspective is this new champion is the is one of the uh, what? There's like two that are immune to sheep, I guess. Le Legget instead of Legate. Legget Teox <laughs> is immune if you've got lots of lizardmen. Now you're introducing another champion that's immune to sheep. So what are we going to do now? We get we get a we creating a problem selling the solution, Plarium, because it certainly seems that way. We we know sheep is terrible. Uh, we know it's overpowered, but now we're just going to introduce a bunch of champions that are immune to sheep, so you have to pull more shards instead of just fixing it. To, so, to, be, to, to be fair, Plarium literally, literally did this. That they first. Uh, they gave us the shield set and then a couple of weeks after that they uh they buffed baron so that he can one shot your team through shield set and then a couple of months after that they gave harima so that baron <laughs> baron isn't op in arena anymore so barium keeps doing this over and over again i don't know how intentional it is every time but it kind of feels like it and it's immensely intentional <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> and anyone yeah. that thinks otherwise is a plarium shill like it's extremely intentional and i think it's the thing like look plarium's a business they have a they have to make money right like we get that they're in quote unquote profit mode my whole point is you can be in profit mode and make money and not just do things that are terrible for the player base over and over and over again and that is my major concern uh going forward so cool that they improve the rewards cool that they've introduced a new set i guess uh that helps a little bit but again still nowhere near far enough to improve this stuff overall and i think anyone who is passionate about the game wants to see it do better wants to see it be as good as it can possibly be so help it to be as good as it can possibly be <laughs> exactly yeah i agree i think, they, I think yes. they will launch a, a fi what to fix roadmap in the future so, <laughs> we, can, so we can see yeah. what they are going to fix by the I, way to, I, I, to I be fair <laughs> to be fair like uh it was literally us like crying in the cc chat about lack of roadmap and the community managers did it so i feel like the communication with the community managers seemed to generally work pretty well but you know obviously they can't you know put our wheel into the into the developers or whoever is in charge so i wish we could talk to them like i wish they would uh, get like wh whatever cc but let us let us have some discussions with the developers like either on like some uh reddit q a or like video with some content creator but i would really love to hear some opinions and train of thought from the devs well, Nub has talked to the developers, I believe, right? You've been one of the few yeah. CCs who's had a chance to do that. 
Yeah, so, and what, they've done two of these like roundtables now as well, where they get several of the content creators in, and they seem to be mixing it up a bit each time as well. Like there was different people the second time, um, so that's nice. But it's uh, it's like more of they, they want it to be more of a private thing, which I think is a bit of a you know yeah. I think they could open it up more. I think that they're kind of a bit shy, you know, <laughs> the first time is like okay, we want it talk with the content creators but we don't you know want like all the big drama videos coming out of it or anything like that like we genuinely <laughs> yeah. just want to talk and you know the whole content creation thing kind of gets in the way a bit um so that's been cool so i've got i've got hope for that like i think the consensus from the second round table talking to the devs was that it was kind of better discussion and like kind of people knew more what to expect so yeah i'm kind of hopeful we will see more of that like they were fairly regular i think it was maybe six months apart so in a few months they might do another one bring in more people be more open-minded and stuff so i think it's moving in the right direction like i think it was quite negative last year at the end of the year especially from the community and i think they're like okay shit let's actually make some big changes in terms of that so but yeah it's a little bit disappointing that they're kind of like for those round tables they're like yeah we prefer you not to make videos on it and like you can talk about the stuff a bit but it's more of a private discussion -y sort of thing. Um, it's I mean, be nice to do, a, as you said, more open stuff. Well, it's such a missed opportunity, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. the number one thing that people complain about in games for the most part, and it doesn't matter what the game is, is poor communication from developers. Like that's mm -hmm. like, you're in this really wonderful place as a developer. You've created something that, that people are passionate about. And obviously there's lots of opinions around that when people are passionate about things, you know, heated opinions. And certainly I'm guilty of this where I will praise player when they do something awesome and I will savage them when they do something. I'm like, you, this is not in the best interest of the player base and you know it and I know it. And frankly, that's how it's supposed to work. That's how feedback works. But if you don't communicate with people, if you don't give them an opportunity and you don't listen, this is the other thing too. And this isn't to knock any of the people in the content creation like uh, liaisons. They're awesome. You know what I mean? They're awesome, awesome, awesome people. But why can we not have that connection with you guys where it's like, look, we want to give you feedback. The community gives feedback. Ideally, that's what content creators do is they help you to parse what feedback makes sense and what helps you to improve your games so that more and people are interested in it uh, and what to prioritize. And I feel like there's almost none of that that happens on a, on a regular basis. And, I get, and again, Siege is a really great example of this because you have the whole community talking about like, dude, I can't repair my buildings. We have no Florins. We can't upgrade stuff. This is a valid, legitimate complaint, but oh, we hear you, but we're we're, uh, we're not. We don't care. We're not going to fix it. Yeah, we'll we'll evaluate it and we'll talk about this five months from now. That's that's not the right way to handle this. Yeah, like, straight up. Yeah, like like I would want to see like not just like you know <laughs> private con conversations with the content creators, but you know like public Q and A's or stuff like that, or just video where some content creator can actually ask questions that are not like you know pre planned. I think they did. Was it with murdering long time ago that they had to pre-approve the questions that he asked? And it wasn't oh, really yeah. like, you know, an actual interview, no, no offense to anybody. But yeah, it would be cool to have that. Sometimes it feels like there's like a big disconnect between like, you know, Raid and the players and even like the content creators and Raid. When we talk with the community managers, they seem to like, you know, get it. But then nothing happens. So I, I feel like we, we can speak with them, but we can't speak with the devs. And I wish we could speak with the actual devs and maybe we could get like some improvements. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if you well, guys have different experiences that, with that. That tells you everything you need to know, right? They won't let you do actual questions because there's a fear of you asking something that they don't want to answer. And that's, I think, one of the biggest things that needs to change to keep this game going strong into the future. Like, you know, there are only so many whales or only so many people that are going to spend in this game. Eventually people will stop. And if you want to keep the game going long term, you know, have some level of discourse, have some level of honesty there, in my opinion, like engage with people. That's what people want. And frankly, I think you will see, you know, if you're open to improving these things, again, if you're open to actually making the improvements, then you will see people be happier overall. Um, and I think you could you could apply that for any mode, Siege, Live Arena, the the market. I mean. Here we are five years into the game. The market is literally, and this was so in, like instructive for me doing a free to play account. The market becomes completely pointless after two months of playing the game, like yeah. except for the occasional ancient shard. How mm. is this not fixed? Come on. Like this is easy. This is easy. I think when you bring a new mode to the game, you want people to have fun with it. 
and um, maybe people that uh, don't like anything that are doing now maybe has a new chance of getting a team that he loves is passionate about but with so many problems you're gonna instead of bringing people together and put people to play this mode you're gonna push the people back to no i'm not interested in it it's a lot of thing of things to think about and not worth to do it so let's forget about it i don't care about this set i'm gonna have accuracy from another set speed from another set and i don't care about polymorph anyway i don't do arena people can just not play it you mm. know so if you make it in the way people can get passionate not only for the the, the game itself but for single mode you're gonna have people that are very interested uh, back in the past, we had people that are, were only interested in PvE. Then we had players that were only interested in CVC. Now we have a lot of people very interested in Arena. Uh, maybe we can have people interested in size in the future. Uh, one point that they have it right in size is the first mode in the game that you actually need to communicate with your entire club to make it work. So it's a good thing to have in the game, but you also need to improve in-game communication to it to happen in the right way. You need to have a in-game way to communicate and let people know what you want to do. And the chat that we already have is not enough to do what we want to do. So you need to improve not only the game mode, but all the areas of the game. So the game mode that you set, it's able to work fine. That's one thing they have to be knowing that's going to happen. At least that's my thoughts about it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's really important as well that they fix the, you know, people can just straight up miss out on rewards because as you said, the in-game communication is really bad. So. You know, again, for a lot of players, it might just be people just go in and YOLO attacks. Uh, so the fact that you got to play, I mean, they can't design something that requires extreme communication for like every sort of player because so many players are reliant on the in game chat and it sucks <laughs> until improvements come in. You have to be able to go in and just have random people randomly attacking with no real communication because they only have in game chat and they still need to be able to effectively do the mode. You can't have it that people are, are losing out resources like they just go oh well no attacks for me uh they're not winning so my defense is never attacked no rewards like that that sucks i also my biggest feedback as well apart, apart from that i'm not really sure what the point of florence are like <laughs> i genuinely feel like this mode would be better if Agreed. florence upgrading buildings and repairing buildings didn't exist like yeah. i don't I don't see what the concept of that is yet. That design, that's going over my head right now. Like, just again, so many players coming in and going, well, our fortress is entirely destroyed. It's going to take months, probably, to rebuild this thing. Like, what's the point? I, I don't get it. Like, the mode would be better without that. Just mana orbs and you can save up and decide when and where to spend them. I feel like that's enough. I don't know what you guys feel about Florence, but big miss for me <laughs> yeah i agreed even you know as like a clan leader who you know i was looking at everybody's defense teams and i was trying to prepare for the seats and know everything about it it's still super confusing to me i also agree that i don't understand why they added those additional you know <laughs> like mechanics to confuse us because we already have those rooms where you can set different conditions and i think that makes it already interesting but i think mm -hmm. But maybe that's like they already said that there's going to be other stuff for the seats and it's not done yet. Maybe it will make more sense later and probably we can get more of those materials from the other content. Maybe something like I, that. I have an idea. Sure. They want to sell you, they want to sell you Florence. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. They, oh, they probably God. will. They like, probably will. Wow. I, that's like, I hate to I'm say I'm sure it, they will. I'm but sure they will. the cynic in me is like, Every decision mm. they make in this stuff is always about how do we exploit the money out of people? You know what I mean? So <laughs> I agree with you, Nub. There's no mm -hmm. reason to have Florence. It doesn't make much sense from like a repairing buildings perspective. Uh, but the cynic in me is like, 
I know why the Florins are there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't even think about that. Pack, yeah. yeah, I didn't even think about that before, but you're 100% right. I'm sure they will add yeah. those. They're definitely going to sell you Florence. That's why. Why do you think they also are like, yeah, we see, you know, we're going to evaluate for a little bit. Don't, don't worry, guys. We're going to evaluate the fact that we know this is a complete <laughs> mess. Just let us evaluate for a little bit. Yeah, we know what you're trying to evaluate. You, you want to sell us packs of Florence. It's just, you know, like that's again, maybe I'm being cynical. And I hope that I am. I hope I'm completely wrong. But as someone who's played Raid for three and a half years now, you know, I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> I usually like to have a positive view of the things. Uh, in the long term perspective of the mode, the Florins are important because if you have a very hard battle and everybody wants to play the mode thinking about it, uh, to have a more powerful stronghold, a more powerful magic tower, a more powerful defense tower, to have access to more buffs and more strong buffs and uh, setting things, more defenses and things like that will make you need to always play the, the mode to have access to the resources. But getting destroyed in the first one and to get back what has been destroyed in the first one, you need at least more five months playing. It's mm. not logical the way they did. I like the mechanic, but I don't like the way it is set right now. For example, we are in a clan that uh, destroyed the battle, but we lost one post. So we will be not able to upgrade our stronghold. Uh, we lost one, one battle out of 26. So that's the way it is. And for the clan that lost the 26 battle, how, how much time is going to take to repair everything, to get uh, not only repairing. If you're always losing and not being able to repair, imagine Evolve. When are you going to be able to evolve? Never. That's the answer right now. Never. Unless they sell Florins and people want to buy Florins or they... <laughs> yeah, I'm telling the you. Way of getting Florins. It's you know, Florin but... sale time, baby. It's Florin sale. Fire sale, man. All the Florins you could ever want. Real cheap. We promise. Yes. <laughs> maybe maybe Plurium will, will fix this by, you know, preventing people from hopping clans because maybe that's going to be a thing now that everybody who had their sieges or their strongholds destroyed have to switch to another clan but i think like i i feel like me and Drog must be like completely on the same like idea here that i really like the concept of clan wars but i don't think the rewards are enough here like there's not enough justification to put all of this effort into this game mode it's only for those people that are super like hardcore and into the game and pvp and it's not worth their time and it's even less for other people but like i said raid is pretty hardcore game even the casual player of the raid plays the game like tons like multiple hours every day like every day of the week it's not like anybody's really casual in this game but there's still like a massive gap between the like <laughs> uber hard hardcore players and you know casual players let's say yeah, True. I think in terms of the rewards, the rebattle rewards are really low for the mana shrines. It's really fun be like, OK, I can only use each champion twice. So I really have to develop a huge roster and have lots of different options to bring in. Like, I really enjoyed that. Um, but like the rewards for doing the rebattles are so small, you can kind of just ignore it, which is a bit of a bummer. I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's like very optional, but. I don't know what you guys think about the rebattles and the mana shrines. Yeah, I, it, I didn't even realize that was a thing. Honestly, I completely uh, didn't, it, I didn't it, like it's a, rebattle anything. It, it's a it's a thing, and we were talking in my clan that is it a bug because the rewards are so small? Is it even meant to be a thing that you can do? But I guess it is. But there's basically, and the funny thing is that I don't think the rebattles in mana shrines those don't even count for like the participation. If, in the seats so if somebody mm -hmm. like didn't get an offense win they can't even do a battle in mana shrine i thought originally that or like after a little bit of thinking that maybe it's some kind of mechanic to make sure that everybody gets the rewards nope <laughs> i yeah, don't think it, i, I don't think there's come... i don't think there's any point to the rebattles or uh, maybe you guys know that something that i don't understand oh uh, i i did some experimentations with the rebattles just to know how the mechanics were working yeah 
So I tried to lose one battle. I lost one battle actually on my account to see if we could use rebattle banners to rebattle our re re rematch, but we can't. Uh, and I discovered it in the bad way. Now people are mocking me because I lost a battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I need I needed to try in the future. Maybe it could work. Uh, that's good, that's farm, good leadership. Good leadership too there. Far, yeah. To farm uh, mana orbs is good to have options. Uh, right now we have low amount of mana orbs, but in the future we're going to have large amount of mana orbs. So the same player could... Uh, Put a lot of buffs in a lot of places. You know, donate a lot of mana orbs and activate a lot of buffs in a lot, a lot of places. And still activate three posts if it want with mana orbs. So to farm the mana orb right now is very important. If you if you can do the rebattles, do the rebattles. You, you're gonna have it. But in a very high perspective, if you're facing a clan that has the same level of your clan. You say casual players against casual players, uh, 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 beginners against beginners, very high-end game against uh, very high-end game is going to be very, very hard to farm mm. because nobody's going to have like 12 attacks without repeating champions to face the best defense of your opponent. You won't. Even in the top clans, even on IPR, we won't have. If we if, if IPR is facing mad, only two or three accounts will be farming the twelve battles. The other right. account won't be able to do it. Not far. Not only three out of the the twelve battles will be possible to do it. So right now, this mechanic needs some thinking process about the way is a red set, and uh, even more thinking about the way it's gonna be in the future. <laughs> so what Drog said. It's half baked, even in the the thing that's already good in it. Yeah, and I would say I would kind of uh, go to the Sunical Drog side again. Like I think that first of all, the rewards from the uh, red battles are not enough to like really justify it. But like you said, people hardly can do many battles. But guess how you can do battles if you have. Uh, primal champions because they count for multiple roles and you can have like support champion and attack champion in one of course you need different factions and so on but i feel like that might be another mechanic you know we got the um, curse city where you need specific um like attack champion or defense champion and so on and we got the same mechanic in the sieges and i think both of these are just way to make uh mythical champions like relevant or more relevant 100 percent Hundred percent. Curse City's entire like literally, if you look at Curse City, and I think Saf was the one who did like a, a breakdown of how many times champions appear in each stage, and like mythicals because they have two forms appear all the times, so, you know, all the time. What a surprise! Like we want to sell mythical shards. This is how we do it. We put content in the game that's basically impossible without mythicals or extremely difficult, except for ultra ultra end game players, and therefore people will spend money. It's the same kind of thing with Siege. You know, they they want to sell those mythical shards. Um, this is how they do it. So again, hate to be cynical because there are a lot of awesome people that work at Plarium, but the truth is the truth. And my third eye is opened. It's fully <laughs> open, guys. I can see everything now. Yeah. I imagine support only room in sieges where somebody else is using, I don't know, let's say like Arbiter, uh, uh, Seer, you know, the basics, like what, what can you even use to kill enemy teams on supports? And then the other team is just using any random four mythicals because they are going to have like support form and some other form. <laughs> it's going to be yeah, pretty hard to seek friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a other guy has like, like Arbiter, like Seer and like two supports. And then the other guy has, you know, Lazarus and you name it, basically any mythical. Right. So that, that was what our siege was like, but we were the guys with the, the fancy stuff. <laughs> They got past their first couple of posts, and then there was the support only post with all the mythicals, and they're just like, "Well, okay." <laughs> These guys didn't have any mythicals, so it was like, "Yeah, sorry, lads." I mean, at least you got a couple of posts down, I guess. Wait, so no terrible. No, well, nope. Okay. How, how many mythicals? Oh, the there was a guy. He had the lizardman room with a level fifty-eight Tox. He had like. 14 defense wins like they didn't have any Teoxes or Lazariuses 
and they're just slamming their heads against it. And it's like, oh my God, it's just that's, faction unity. Let's go, baby. <laughs> that is like, that's my biggest complaint with, with Raid is that there's an incredible game here with unbelievable depth for content, you know, for combat, with lots of cool mechanics and PVE, with great, great, great teams that know what they're doing and know how to develop stuff. But the monetization aspect of it always comes in and ends up just screwing over stuff that should be like simple, simple, simple. Like we don't want to do this because it makes the game worse. But at the end of the day, nothing matters more than the almighty dollar. And it happens constantly. And it's such a shame because there are so many really cool things that this team knows how to do that they have done. And I just feel like whoever is responsible for the monetization Man, they've really turned it up too recently as well. They have turned it up to 11 where they are trying to, to get even more out of people. And it's like, uh, it just, it, it, it bumps yeah. me out because I love the game. It bumps me out. I, yeah. I actually think Siege is probably the most fun for like sort of mid to end game free to play clan if you're against another also free to play clan where then you can come in and be like, oh, I'm the guy, I've got the mythical for this faction, or I've got the faction unity, and that's actually spent, like, maybe no one else in the clans have it. But, like, there's not so many that you're just going, like, man, like, all these defenses are crazy, mythicals and faction unity, and I can never do anything. It's like, when people have just a couple of them in both sides of the matchup, so you kind of feel special, I think that works well. But, mm -hmm. I mean, then that's only for some people, right? The monetization, I mean, just, someone could just come in and spend lots of money and, uh, yeah, suddenly there's a big crack in carrying the clan. And <laughs> like we had that against the guys we were playing. Like uh, we, we were seeing the defense logs, and like a lot of them were just very, you know, kind of like, oh, early game stuff. And then they, they had like this one crack and he came in and just started smashing the post down. Like, oh shit. Wow. Okay. Fair play. Um, so yeah, there's the there's imbalance there. But I think it could, it's actually, it works. The mythicals and the, the faction unity stuff, that works well when they're kind of rare. I kind of, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel, but I, I, personally wouldn't find it super fun if it's just like just crazy teams against each other all the time i don't know but that's me um i i think if you have really good matchmaking to your point it can work mm. for all levels like even as people who are at the super i you know high-end spender whale category i would still have fun if the matchmaking is really good because then it's a real challenge but i also agree with you that there is that kind of unique fun of being in that mid-tier to you know clan where it's like i've got the one I am the chosen one for the stage. I've got you boys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> ideally you can actually talk to your clanmates and share that. You know, like so you know, but you know, hey, wait, type it into clan chat, no one sees. No one knows. <laughs> yeah, you know, no one knows. No <laughs> one knows. You know, so someone ends up like wasting six different teams. But yeah, like ideally that would be a heroic moment and something that'd be really cool within yeah. the raid ecosystem. Be like, dude, I've got the Lazarius boys. Don't worry. Papa's here. He's gonna take care of this. Uh, so I don't know, but I I, I agree with you in, in in that regard that there's a lot of fun in that. I just really hope the matchmaking, and again, they said it will improve. So take it at face value. But I really hope it improves quickly. Right now, Arkan's mocking people that lost on offense. <laughs> it's what we had. <laughs> But by the way, and that was one of them. I, I would say yeah. that uh, kind of to what uh, Noob also said, I feel like it's not just uh, like monetization. I feel like Raid has very good combat mechanics. And that's like having played those other mobile games that launched recently. I would say that like AFK Journey and Watcher of Realms, for example, I think both of them were very good games. And I feel like they almost do everything else better than Raid, except combat. But the combat in Raid is just so much better that the game has much more potential. And I wish Raid would do the events and the UI stuff and like those those kind of things as good as the other games. Like you were talking about the defense teams. Like why, for instance, le why why don't they add more community related things to the sieges? Like let's say somebody gets three battle defense win streak. Maybe he should get some kind of uh, uh, reward for it, or maybe it should show in the global chat i mean there's all kinds of you know small things that they could make the game feel a lot more alive and interactive but the base game is like you know the combat is very good the battles can be super interesting but it feels like you know they are very, being very stingy about the rewards and we don't have the chat we don't have friendly battles you know in the live arena we don't have the uh the seasonal matchups and this kind of stuff it feels like it's just missing all of the flair to make it super interesting 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is the company that took away a sacred shard and a free chicken. I've never <laughs> forgotten. Never forget. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when it when it comes to rewards, like Raid is extremely stingy compared to other, you know, competitors in the space. But I think that's the, the tough thing is they can be because people are fully invested in this ecosystem because the combat is so good. Like that's that's Raid's secret sauce. They nailed it. They nailed that aspect of the game with the exception of like the insane amounts of RNG that have come into the game lately. So you could argue they've kind of screwed that up massively. But that was like the thing that got me interested back in the day. It was like, oh man, I love the combat system. I love the depth here, the, the amount of things to, to account for, the strategy you can go in uh, before RNG kind of ruined all that. So, yeah. Yeah, the visual of a battle are something that, that catches you in this game. So, if you have a massive mode to do a lot of different kind of battles, you need to take advantage of it. I would be the incredible mode to promote the game even more, but my need to do it right. Uh, to me, I confess, right now we are on bad battle. <laughs> we yeah. have bad battle. Saige is on bad right now. At least six months. Ahead, I think they can launch a better version of it with everything put in the right place, and people who actually can have a lot of fun with it. with it. People who would actually go together in somehow anything that you can communicate with your form that is not in game right now, but in the future maybe it is. And well, that's, that's, that's the question. question. That's the question, will they? Because look at Live Line. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. Well, aren't, they, aren't they, they're, they're, they're not going to do anything. Like, I hate to be that person who feels that negatively, but, but you know, you know past actions can speak louder than any kind of words. And I, and I look at Live Arena and the absolute lack of progress that we've been doing now last year. year. And it and just, just makes me think, like, are they actually going to do anything to see to make it better? better? And I agree with you. We're definitely in beta mode. mode. Yeah, you know, Live Arena is in beta after a year. That's yeah. still in beta too. Yeah. And how how big thing would it be to add like you know seasonal events? I mean, they're doing events every week for like you know tournaments and normal events. Why can't we do it for live arena? I mean, it, it's still kind of popular game mode, even though it's not as big as it could be. But I don't see why they wouldn't do it. It could be huge, and it could drive yeah. so much money for them. This is the thing that drives me crazy. It could drive so much money for them if people. If more people wanted to play, if it was more accessible to all different, you know, levels of the game, if there were more reasons to be invested, if RNG was not as as prominent as it is now, like that's the thing that drives me crazy. At the end of the day, it's all about making money because it's a business. Well, in my opinion, and I and I really truly believe this, if you improve your product, people want to spend more money. You know, sure. that's how that's how business works. The the better your product is, the more more people are invested, the more they want to spend money. So that's that's my hope. That's my like concern with Siege is that it's definitely half baked on arrival. It doesn't have half of the features that it needs or any of the thought process and to make it better. There is potential here again, like many things in Raid. There is immense potential, but going off of history, my my fear is that that potential will never be realized or will be realized at such a later date that so many people have already quit the ecosystem and walked away, and that is an absolute travesty yeah and yeah kind of like how you know class of clans is trying to make it esport or i guess it's been like a thing for like years i don't understand why raid is not trying to make live arena esports especially when it was new and it launched like i thought they were gonna try to do it i mean not like league of legends but you know what i mean i mean i thought they would try to make a competitive scene for live arena but they just forgot about the game mode and i feel like that's what they do to a lot of game modes as well, you know. They don't usually come up with any new updates on old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think we are far from uh, exports on 
Oh, yeah. Ryan Bruin, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't yeah, think it's yeah. gonna happen, but they should have tried. I feel like they should have tried. You know what I mean? I, I'm not saying it's gonna be like super peak of like competition and fair, but they should have tried it. I feel like they. It, it I'm could... just thinking like Raid Shadow Legends eSport. Who has the largest credit card? And Drock plays but, but, Black but, American Express. But you know, but Doc but, Moreau but, responds. But you know, know, they do it in Clash of Clans, and it's also pay to win in that game. So I mean, true. It's, That's true. That is true. And, you know, it's kind of big, you know, people watch it. I mean, it's kind of popular. I mean, and I think Raid is still a bigger game overall, but the esports side of Clash of Clans and the competitive side, it's much bigger deal than in Raid. Why? Like, why is Raid not trying to, like, compete in that? Yeah. Who knows? That's a, that's a business decision for them. Yeah. But they need to, to prepare the mode to be more competitive before mm. launch a thing like that. I think at least I mm. I think they should, uh, but between reality and what's going on, <laughs> what should go on, <laughs> yeah. it's a gap. Yeah, like Siege especially specifically has I think really good potential, but there's some obviously massive problems right now. Like definitely, I think the community vibe is very negative as well. Like the reality is that probably at least a third of the, like viewers on YouTube that I've seen and so many of the commenters then are coming in and saying like, well, we got smashed in our first siege, our base is destroyed and we hate this mode. It's such a bad first impression. So like, like Drock was saying, you know, they can't just sit in their asses and not do anything. Like you have to come out and make at least fix those immediate things quickly so that people will actually enjoy the mode. And like you can improve it in the future. I, I, like, I don't mind that. Like obviously some improvements take a long time to come in. And you know, fair, it's, it's difficult as well to, I think, test the mode because compared to, you know, having, you know, potentially hundreds of thousands, millions of people perhaps playing it through clans. Now, that's different. It's hard to, you know, how many testers do you actually have to fully test the mode? That becomes difficult. But there's some obvious things, small fixes that should be done quickly. You know, I'm like, I, I think it's very clear to see it. The community is coming in and saying, yeah, we really are not impressed with this mode. And like, for obvious reasons, they need to, to tweak those things quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm really, I'm really interested to see, to see the comments on this video. Like, obviously, we've mm. talked about this for a long time, but I'm, I'm really curious, and I hope this video reaches a large audience to see what people in the community think, because I think that's always like the biggest thing. And I agree with you, Nub. I think that the things that I've seen, whether it's on Reddit or whether it's on comments on YouTube videos, people are like, "Dude, this is like, come on, man, this, this yeah. is a bummer," you know. But I'm curious what people say to this, and if, and if, and if that reaches Plarium where it's like, "Hey, you know what? Okay, we see the." The frustration let's make the improvements now let's not wait we know what needs to be fixed right. like you know <laughs> let's fix it let's, by, let's let's improve it by the way yeah. i concur with that like obviously in my own clan people were super hyped about this and very active we were talking a lot about the teams but outside of that like in comments and like in my discord outside of my clan and on reddit and basically everywhere else i have seen the community feedback has been pretty like negative and not like you know mm -hmm. people were just like disappointed that it's not it's not good and it's like a dead content on arrival basically even, yeah, even yeah. though and, and I i'm still you know gonna be into it and i'm sure you guys will be but not not most other I, people and i, I think yeah i'll definitely be into it you know what i mean because it's part of what we want to do at ipr but i think the other thing too is that like you know, they're, they're, Raid does things that are immediate auto, automatic wins where people are super stoked. You know what I mean? They know how to do wins. A great example of this, like one of my favorite examples is when they made it so you could auto battle the clan boss. You know what I mean? What a massive win. Now, you could argue they didn't go far enough because you have to be able to one key the clan boss. So typical kind of half measure <laughs> stuff, but still a major improvement that was universally praised overall. Here's your chance to do that here, man. You know how to fix it. Don't wait four months to do small things. Put a couple programmers on this. Get this stuff taken care of now. And then you'll see the community rally behind this. And it will be, again, another reason for people to play your game and to spend that sweet, <laughs> hard, cold cash that we know you want. You need that cash. So, I don't know. Yeah, We'll see. To, to, to be fair, yeah, they have a great opportunity here to make something even greater than already it is. But they need to do it right and fast. <laughs> like, yeah, instant completion. It's not it, easy. <laughs> instant completion, you know, <laughs> is not a new thing. All the other like uh, 
like uh, mobile gacha games have it too. Many of them have like it in more content. Often you can do it in basically every piece of content or almost everything except maybe something like clan boss. In raid, it's a little bit different, and everybody is using Arasala Helper, and we're kind of getting by it in a different way that we're basically doing instant battles, but not really. Um, I feel like we could have instant battles on everything. I mean, I don't think Raid would have ever done instant battles on clan boss unless people complained about it a lot and asked it. And if they wanted to, they could do it on everything else too. <laughs> and I wish they did. Oh, yeah. Well, imagine if you could instant battle the Hydra, but then get this. Wait, we're not done yet. You can instant battle the Hydra, but then you can actually watch your battle back. Boom! Massive brain thing there. You could actually see where it goes wrong or something like that. Or for content creator purposes, I have Nub come on the channel. We do a Hydra video. I'm like, Nub, don't worry. I'm not going to make you watch an hour and a half of Hydra <laughs> battling. We're going to instant battle, and then we can quickly scrub through the video. Like, mm. this is all technically possible. All of this stuff mm. is doable. You know, so I, I wish that they would do that kind of stuff for, for other content as well. But yeah, for Siege, it's like there's so much potential here. Please realize the potential. I'm begging you, please. Actually, these recording mechanics, it would be vital to Siege to be uh, even better. Not even better, but a better, <laughs> a better mode. You know, if you're able to record the defense and people can see it like, like it is in other games that has this kind of game mode. It will be perfect because we see we are making fun of the people that uh, won 12 battles in the defense, but we want to watch it. We want yeah. to see the, the, the champions that people use, how they use, and it will be fun. We, we can have fun together in the club and things like that, that make people have passion for the game. It's these things, these little things that makes people get passionate about it. The community gets together and have something to do together. You know, yeah. something that could be I, I'm interested if they might do it, because when Live Arena came out, obviously a lot of people are asking for can we have a mode where we can battle our friends in Live Arena, like battle our clan mates. Now, with Siege, that's very well, because I mean, as you said earlier, you know, we don't really know if our defenses are good or not because they didn't even get attacked or the clan was weak. So, you know, it wasn't a real test actually being able like imagine going in and being able to say, OK, me versus my clan mate let's go in lizard man let's see if this lizard man team or this hp based only team like if this is actually good uh that could be a pretty fun way to test it out and again yeah just play with your clan have more social engagement and really theory craft building your teams more so than just pure theory actually testing it that could be huge so i don't know i'm interested to see if that's something that will come seeing as it's been a feature that has been wanted for live arena testing as well for a long time so in theory, they could have been working on this for months. Maybe mm -hmm. they've not even touched it like, yeah, no, but I'm curious if that will come or not. I, I hope so, man, because that's definitely one of my most requested features for Live Arena for sure. Because mm -hmm. as a content creator, think about how much fun it would be to be able to like battle other content creators, battle friends in your clan, make videos on that. It's such an untapped, you know, marketplace. Make tournaments. E -sport. Yeah. Doing tournaments. Yeah, you could do tournaments. Yeah. You could literally yeah, do tournaments you and you could seed it based off of like okay we're gonna put you know doc's account as number one and we're gonna put like drock at number two or three or whatever and we're gonna seed it based on what we want to see happen and oh my god it would be so much fun you could even have little prize pools kind of like smash bros if you guys are into that i'm a big smash bros guys but ah uh, it's like the potential this is what drives yeah. crazy because yeah. i love the game but like just None of this actually happens. Mm. <laughs> it never I mean, actually happens. I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know how well you remember, but last time we did a video with you, or maybe the second last time, we talked about this a lot. But if you could do those player-made tournaments, then we could also do all the things that we wanted, that we could make epic only tournaments. We could have prize pools. We, we could make uh, live streams about the tournaments. It would be very big, like, community thing. And there could be a lot of, like, uh, content and PR like stuff for raid and so on. It seems so untapped thing because they could basically just give us the uh, like the UI settings that we can actually do it, and then they don't have to put any effort that we could actually make the content and have fun with that. I don't understand why they didn't do it or why why it hasn't happened in like one year after release. That's that's the great mystery. Somebody from Playrib, if you're watching this video, sorry to be negative, but can you please just tell us why? Please.
<laughs> they're working they're working on jumbo prism shards instead man they don't have time for that <laughs> jumbo prism shards That's you right. know it's hilarious i for... actually believe that i believe that wait, wait. Uh, <laughs> do the prism shards but they've got florins in them huh yeah, we're oh, still... oh, oh, whoa, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. oh my brain it's so big brain <laughs> 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 you, you know how we have how we have skins for champions. We could have mythical mm. skins. You know, not just normal skins, but oh, but yeah. super oh, super yeah. mythical skin. <laughs> fifty dollars per skin, though. Uh, you know, like twenty nine ninety nine ain't cutting it anymore. I want no, fifty. You, fifty you, per skin. You, you you need to buy ten skins, and then you have ten percent chance to get the mythical skin. Oh, oh you're right. Oh right. my god, I, I, what was I thinking? Oh, so you, have to get, you have to get the skin for both forms separately, right? If you only have it for one half, you kind of <laughs> use it. <right. laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> wow. We just solved it. All right, revenue's go. going up, guys. We did it. Yeah. Best part of the video. <laughs> but it's there. If we can make these things happen at least some of the things we discuss here this game mode could be actually fun mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah it could be it something could be. that we're missing right now <laughs> the fun so what do, you, what do you guys think will happen with the game mode in six months is it going to be like cvc that most clans like basically ignore it what, what do you think about it the real thing I, got, I think is going to wrap it, happen in six months is the low, they will lower the amount of florins is need to to re to reconstruct the stronghold and all the buildings and uh, only that. Yeah, <laughs> only I, that. I completely echo that. I think very few changes will be made. Some small change like that where florin amounts get lowered and that's probably it. And god i hope i'm wrong please prove me wrong but me too. Mm, that's mm -hmm. that's if i were a betting man based off of history that's probably what's going to happen yeah what i'm intrigued but also worried about is that they've said you know oh there's more layers to the siege so they clearly have and you were mentioning it earlier shinny mm -hmm. they clearly have more plans quite developed plans and possibly completed content ready to go for it already but then we've seen like in the past, like we know they've they've had other Hydra heads like ready to go. And then they were like, eh, well, people didn't really like the mode, so we won't really bother doing it. Or, you know, I think they've done that with several stuff where I think they have had stuff ready to go. But then because maybe the engagement isn't what they want, then they hold back. I'm, yeah. I'm worried about that. That could be something that could happen with Siege. That's like, oh, well, you know, engagement in the mode's kind of low. I guess we'll just leave it at one layer and we'll just put that stuff in the vault and the content never comes out that would be disappointing so i think that's a that's a worry i would have um yeah. we'll see. Mm. it's a good point because they you're absolutely right they've done it in so many modes they did that with doom tower where they talked about having more things and then they didn't they did it with hydra mm -hmm. and then they didn't um you know what like the the towers or whatever that were supposed to be things and then weren't and yeah, yeah, I completely. Live agree arena, with you. the battle rules is clearly yeah. intended yeah. to be something, and it's like, eh, well, you know, yeah, well. just the gold stuff. That's it. But more shard events, baby. Different types of shards and more shard. We'll have the best, the most incredible shard events that you've ever seen. The best. <laughs> and happen, and happen <laughs> every week, four times a week. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now only two times a week now, so it can happen <laughs> four times. Oh man. But by the way, one thing you mentioned before is that you can't see the battle logs in Siege. That is not as big, like, I would rather want to get the updates on Live Arena. I'm super into that content and I would want to do those tournaments and so on there. But like, we can't see the battle logs. Like, for instance, when we had that one guy in our clan who got like 12 wins, and it was a weird team with like uh, Ali Kagayus, Mountain King, and Rotos. And somehow it got 12 wins against like teams that looked very good with like Hegemon and actual good champions. If I could see those battle logs, I definitely would have made a video about it. Probably somebody would have posted it on Reddit and it, it would have gone around. Maybe other people would have commented on it. It could have been a thing. I'm sure other people could have had their own things. It's kind of, you know, wasted potential that there's a lot of like community uh, events that we could create ourselves, but they're not giving us the tools to like actually do it. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? What about like I have a battle with somebody, and then I can get the link of it and share it to other people. I mean, you can do this in other games. Why can't you do it in Red? I mean, to record the battle would make this mode 
a lot better. A lot better. Yeah. To, to be able to see the differences. It would make people will get together to watch it and solve things and do things like that, you know? It, uh, in the future, uh, if you face someone that is very close to you in the matchmaking system, you're going to have to set roles for your clubmates. So there are people that are going to face the defense, see what the, 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 the champions are built. So another person that has the a specific champions built to win against this defense, do go there and fight it. And this, this way you can progress. Uh, mm -hmm. In the future, I think it's, that's the way it's going to work. If the matchmaking works, if other things work. And to have you that building the defense, see people how they are reacting to your defense would be, make it you even better in the next ones. And you can improve and have fun <laughs> to see people get smacked by your defense. Yeah. Well, you know, let's. I think at the end of the day, they know what they need to do. Now is will they do it? You know, and that's what we what we'll find out. But hopefully, they'll watch this hour and a half long video uh, <laughs> entirely and uh, listen to everything we say, and then everyone um, goes home happy. Yes. Sometimes I think about it that if they actually listen to our wishes, like I'm sure it wouldn't go perfectly. But then I feel like surely it would be better than it is. Like I mean, sure, surely if you know. Obviously, they can't take all of the cues from players, but they could listen a little bit. Come on, give us some like little bit scraps sometimes. Come on. Yeah, well, we're the ones playing the game every day. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's one of the biggest things that happens with developers sometimes. And, and this is very true of any development studio is there's this tension between players and developers where because players are pointing things out or opinionated. But at the end of the day, the, peop the players are the people playing the game. They play it all the time. They, in my opinion, have really good feedback the vast majority of the time. Not everything that people suggest is correct, but if I were betting, I would say that, you know, the vast majority of things that people bring up are valid criticisms. And it's just on the developer at that point to be open to hearing them, to not take it personally, and to improve and take passion and pride in their work and improve whatever they're working on. Yeah, and, um, and, and you for, know. for instance, you mentioned before the free monthly sacred chart. I don't think actually removing that was like a big deal but why did they remove it? I mean, it was just neg negative thing made all of the players mad, and you know, a lot of you know, <laughs> th there was no reason to do it. They could just let us Shinny. keep the shark. Shinny, baby, have you learned nothing? It's yeah, <laughs> Shinny, my boy. <laughs> it's about the money. Yeah, but come on, does one sacred shard really make that big difference? I feel like they're just you know, uh, they they could just let players be happy. They could, they could, but. Oh well, mm. that's there. You go. That's that's the siege video, guys. <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. That yeah, it was a super long video. Does anyone have anything else to say that we didn't bring up? Give me the avatars from the other tires, please. <laughs> wait, wait. Are we sure about that? That you can just r randomly get yes. the other avatars in future? Yes, we're positive. They told us in, oh, in, okay. in content creator chat that you can't get them. <laughs> okay, I didn't I'm see that. Sure my creator yet, but my, my bad. I, I think they told. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see it. My bad. My bad. Well, this is fun. Yeah, good, good jamming with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for everybody for coming. So it's been a seeds video with uh, Noob, Cruzen, and Drock. Thanks for coming. And if you have anything else to say in comments, maybe we were horribly wrong about something. Then let us know. I'm sure. I'm sure Drock will find about it if somebody somebody says that <laughs> Polymorph needs to get buffed or something. I'm sure he will hear about it eventually. Oh yeah, they'll tell me. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see ya.